And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Vicious Fishes. Now, absolutely full disclosure, I am the designer of Vicious Fishes. Uh, this is a game that uh, I designed kind of when I was bored a long time ago, and I worked on it for a while, and I showed it to some companies, but I wasn't like ecstatic about it. I thought it was a decent game. I didn't think it was fantastic, so it never went anywhere. But um, then when Nestor Games offered to pick it up on his print-and-demand service from uh, Spain, I was glad. Unfortunately, the price point was too high, so very few people bought him. He's now managed to make it uh, a smaller price point, but then, of course, by cutting back on the components, which is what it is. Now, if you don't like the fact that I'm looking at my own game, I completely understand. Take this with a complete grain of salt. And also, we did a part one. Hopefully, that will balance anything good I say about the game out. Obviously, I don't think it's a terrible game. I would not have designed it. So let's take a look at what's inside here, and we'll be back. In Vicious Fishes, at the beginning of the game, each player is going to get one of these tiles that's secret. It's going to show you three colors, like this one's yellow, green, blue, or maybe you'll have blue, pink, orange, whatever. Now, what that means is these are the colors that are going to score for you at the end of the game. Basically, you're going to take the two colors that score the highest and subtract the one that scores the lowest. So let's say I'm yellow, green, blue. I might decide I'm going to try to make yellow tank and green and blue will be my two colors. Each color is going to score separately. There are six colors in the game, and they'll be keeping track of those points as the game progresses. At the beginning of the game, you're going to put four rocks around the board. These rocks are just kind of to basically be areas that you can't go into. They act as if there's borders all around them. It's to keep the board from being the same. And players are going to draw a handful of five tiles. Now on your turn, you're going to place a fish on the board. Now the first fish won't do anything, but after that, fish can start attacking each other. When you put a fish down so that the fish is facing another fish, in this instance the shark is facing the green one, I look at the numbers. Seven beats four, so the pink one eats the green one, which would give pink one point. Okay? Um, it is possible, as the game progresses, uh, like an octopi, an octopus here attacks in all eight directions. However, he's not big enough to kill this seven shark. But maybe later on, a four fish will attack the shark from the rear, in which case there's eight attacking this seven, and then the seven is killed, giving orange two points. The reason orange would get two points is because sharks are worth two when they are killed. You can even have a fish commit suicide, in essence. I could put this fish right here, having this one kill it automatically, giving the red team another point. And it's possible as the game progresses, and likely will happen, um, that sometimes you'll have fish down, and this one would get killed here instantly. Uh, a tie does not do anything to the other fish. Um, it's possible, now you see this four octopus is completely surrounded, and it survived. So we put a marker on it to show that it survived, and then the red team will get a point for that fish surviving. If these little itsy bitsy one fish survive, they will get two points for their team. There's also crabs which attack in two different directions, and there's, two, there's dual color fish. You see this blue-green fish here? When that fish eats somebody, you can decide what color it is, whether it's blue or green, or when it's eaten, you can decide what color it is, blue or green. Now, as the game progresses, the board's going to fill up. If you run out of markers, there's not enough included in the game to cover every spot. You just take them off one section that's already been scored and move them to the other section. And like I said at the end, everyone will reveal. The board will be completely filled up. Everybody will reveal their scores, and whoever has the highest score, you take your two highest minus your lowest, whoever has the highest score is the winner of the game. So, you know, it is what it is. It's abstract, which seems really weird coming from me since I'm such a big thematic guy. I had this idea of the, of the fish wars, but really you're just trying to get your colors to do the best. Um, it, it's kind of a... a it's. it's it's, I couldn't get the colors to balance as perfectly as possible. You have to be careful in a three-player game um, that two people don't have two of the same colors because they might decide to make both those colors do well and the third person will likely be eliminated. And I couldn't think of a way to, to fix that except to have multiple sets of different tiles to pick from depending on the number of players and then that would have caused problems 
uh, price wise. But as it is, it's still pretty fun, I think, where you get to put down a fish and the fish are dying very quickly. Um, octopus and uh, octopi and the crabs going around. And, you know, there's not a lot of tension in the game, but it is inter interesting as you put the fish down, trying to keep the one fish alive and trying to take out sharks and watch your, you know, you see your score go back and forth. So, an interesting game. It does go up to six players. I think it plays best with four, um, but it can go up to six and can go also go down to two and made the numbers even like that. And it's an abstract strategy game that I think families would like and doesn't take very long. We're talking half hour at the most. So that's Vicious Fishes. Of course, my opinion is completely suspect in this matter, but it is one that I think some people will like. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Tom Bassel, shut that door. Boop. Boop.